While there are stunt performers on the set of Cobra Kai, a lot of actors did their own stunts and learned karate for real. In fact, they got so good at it so fast, it became a problem as they were performing at a higher level than their characters were at the time, so they actually had to tone down their skills. Jacob Bertrand estimated that 90% of the time, it's the actual cast members you see on screen performing the stunts. For Hawk's season 4 major fight, the intense battle was done for real with limited stunt doubles, with Bertrand saying, yes, those are my real nipples. In terms of the stunts, I think in season 4 there's only one little take of the show where my stunt double is shown. This is something I'm really proud of. The part of the sequence which Bertrand wasn't allowed to do was the jump into the flying triangle, with the actor saying, Don wouldn't let Thomas catch me and throw me on the ground, but pretty much everything else I got to do. Now, this is all kind of crazy when you think what little experience the actors had when they were first cast. Before Cobra Kai, Mary Mouser had no experience in martial arts and actually went into season one not knowing if her character would even do karate. I had no experience in this. Um, it was a lot of work. At first, she was content with just being on the show, but after seeing her co-stars train for the action sequences, she started asking whether she could join in, only then learning that they had big plans for her. We're gonna put you in training, and so I got myself into kickboxing and Muay Thai for like a couple months before the official training started. The one move Mouser said had been the hardest for her to nail so far was the tornado kick. She said, For some reason, my body does not want to do a tornado kick. There's something about the timing, about the first foot hitting the ground that my body doesn't want to do. I messed up probably 20 takes. I literally just walked out of the room for a minute because I was about to cry tears of frustration. What's that? A flying tornado kick. Now, Mouser wasn't the only one who had little experience going into the show. Sholo Maridueña apparently didn't know what to expect, and found training with stunt coordinator Hiro Koda and his stunt double in a warehouse scary, and he was unnerved by having his body move in ways he wasn't used to. He said some of those first days were the roughest ones. My body was like just crying, but I think it really is a testament to our stunt coordinators. They really work so hard to make sure that we're able to do all of our stunts, and I think that we're comfortable. I think without them, Cobra Kai is not as good as it would be. For the season 3 finale fights, most of the stunt work was done by the actors themselves, with Koda saying, In those two finale sequences, it was about 90% cast. There were doubles there worked in the sequence, and they were brought in what we call a Texas switch, but the actors did the majority of the work. He was also very insistent that the actors are all perfectly capable of doing a lot of their own stuff, even when they're not the ones doing them in the stunts. Coda said that the older actors had to shake off the rust a bit, but are also quick learners as well as very hard workers. He said that Martin Cove, who plays John Kreese, works so hard and he's probably harder on himself than anybody else. But of course, stunt performers play a vital role in the show, and like the actors, they need to be perfectly cast. For Sam, first they needed someone to look like Mary Mouser, who is 5'3", with a similar body shape. Then they needed to have the skill set. They needed to be able to perform the big fight scenes, have martial arts experience, have the ability to hit the ground, but also be able to flip. Then on top of that, they needed someone with experience and who understood how to do these stunts for film, who knew about camera angles as well as how to sell punches and kicks correctly and help other actors in huge fight scenes. Finding someone with all these assets was like finding a needle in a haystack, but eventually they landed on Giulio Maggio, a 5'3 stunt performer with a background in cheerleading, gymnastics, and Jeet Kune Do martial arts. Janelle Kerfman, who is also one of the show's coordinators, also acted as the double for Peyton List, who plays Tori. Kerfman found the challenge of performing and coordinating at the same time very difficult, saying she was torn between acting and coordinating duties all the time. But being Tori's stunt double does have its positives too, and in particular in the sequence where she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sam, with Kerfman saying, It works out too because I train Mary, so she and I are very in sync when it comes to performing together. Kerfman has said that List's martial arts skills have most improved out of everyone in the Cobra Kai cast, and that she has progressed so much to be Tori and to be a badass. Now, when working on stunts, the stunt team does try to cater to their actors and their strengths as much as possible when they're choreographing their fights. As they've trained with them from the very beginning, they know exactly what their strengths are, and if there's something in particular that they want the actor to be able to do by the finale, they'll start working with them on the first day as soon as they step in the door for preseason training. 
Kerfman said, When our actors are getting their coverage shots in a fight, we always have them fight with a stunt person because then they go harder. They perform better and they're not worried about hitting another actor in the face. It really works to our benefit to get the best performance possible from our actors when they can just go full out in that way. For Season 4, Episode 3, Sam jumps between two buildings with nothing but a few mattresses at the bottom, and this was a stunt that was done for real, although unsurprisingly, a stunt double was used. Mouser said, I think the only thing I was not allowed to do was fly between the buildings in Season 4, Episode 3. But I did get to sprint toward the jump and roll out of it, I just didn't get to fly over the buildings. That was my super lovely stunt double, Selkie Hom. She's amazing. Unsurprisingly, a lot of attention to detail goes into coordinating a fight sequence. I know, hard to believe, right? Coda said, Everything was a challenge in Season 3, but the one that was arguably hardest to execute was the big finale fight in the LaRusso house. Apparently, the big Season 3 showdown was originally supposed to take place outside in the Miyagi-Do dojo, but apparently the weather caused issues with the production schedule. So, they changed their mind and decided to do it inside the house instead, which means the production team ended up having to change things very quickly and make it work inside the house instead of outside. While it may have been a hassle for the stunt team, being inside the LaRusso house ended up being a lot of fun for them, and more fun than it might have been if they were outside. While in the LaRusso house, they were able to travel through the entire place and have action spill out everywhere. There was also a lot more stuff for them to break, with glass and props all around, with director Josh Heald apparently saying, You guys find whatever you want in this house and break it. Break everything if you want. Although, despite this, Coda says that the Season 2 finale high school fight was really still his and Kerfman's all-time favorite. The school fight itself ended up being a challenge, because they were actually shooting in a real, fully functional school, which meant that it was hard for them to shoot during the week and they could only shoot on weekends. Also, Tanner Buchanan revealed that they had only four days to shoot the scene, which of course was a one-er, aka a scene that is filmed with no cuts, with them eventually getting it in seven takes. As the sequence was so complex, some of the cast found themselves forgetting the choreography, with Mouser saying she forgot Lists Tori was going to try to kick her and had to move out of the way just in time. Mouser also picked up an injury while filming the sequence after she bruised her hand and had to head to the ER before returning to film the next day with her fingers still taped together. For the infamous moment where Miguel falls over the guardrail, Mariduena revealed that he had a harness on and he was lowered down the stairwell until his stunt double Noah took over and eventually performed the last part of the drop for him. Coda and Kerfman were meticulous about making sure each character's fighting style was personalized and distinct. We prepped it and choreographed it early in the time before, Coda said. We developed each and every one of the characters' fight styles. We had the same stunt doubles from previous seasons, so we know how they work. For Chosen, who teaches Daniel the pressure points technique, while some of these moves were written in the script and as story points, there were no specifics on exactly what it was. So, they gave the stunt team creative control on how to come up with those different pressure points to make it cool and exciting. This meant that they basically had to come up with the moves from scratch. So, they looked into certain martial arts that had similar practices to the style that they were trying to pull off, and took some of those specific moves out of those martial arts, incorporated them into the show, and tweaked them to make them look cooler, bigger, and look like they'd be more effective on the screen. There's practical fighting, and then there's fighting on camera, and there is a big difference between the two. But working on a show and in the stunt department is never easy, and there was always something going wrong. Kerfman said that something happened in every single sequence that they shot, whether it was something wrong in the environment that they were shooting in, or times that they were simply running out of time, and therefore had to cut out chunks of the choreography. According to Kerfman, in every single fight we did last season, there was something that had to be adjusted or changed the day of. However, with the amount of physicality in the show, despite the amount of rehearsal, accidents and injuries have occurred on the Cobra Kai set. William Zabka revealed that he had sustained a large number of injuries while rehearsing fight scenes with Martin Cove, who plays Kreese. And apparently, he broke his toe and pulled a tendon, but didn't tell anyone about it despite being in severe pain. But the award to who causes the most injuries and accidental hits goes to Sholo Maridueña, who said, I think that accidents do happen a lot on set. I think the ones that are really drastic happen a little bit less, but I will say a lot of them happen because of me. 
He added, I won't shy away from it. I am a little bit of a klutz in that regard. But yes, I have accidentally punched Jacob Bertrand, Hawk, in the face once. And then I think a couple of other people have gotten some injuries here and there, but honestly, I think it happens a lot less than you would expect. And finally, an example of a stunt done for real was the flip on the wall that Robbie does in his second juvie, and according to John Hurwitz, that was all Tanner Buchanan and no stunt doubles. 